We're in Monte Carlo for the Rendezvous to September. I'm Richard Banks for AMBest TV, and I'm joined now by Tom Wakefield from Gallagher UK. Tom, welcome. Thank you very much, Richard. Thanks for having me. Not at all. So, Tom, you're here in a very different role from uh, your roles when you've been here in the past. Um, it's early on in the, uh, in the event. Can you tell us a little bit about the message that you're bringing to Monte Carlo this year? Yeah, thanks, Richard. I mean, huge amounts has changed, hasn't it? There's been a lot of people movement over the last few years, including myself and, and others. Um, and we're really excited to be here as the overall Gallagher -E team. The main message for us is not about Gallagher, -E, it's about our clients. And, you know, the market's in an interesting place. Um, it's been tough trading conditions. You know, rates have been hardening in, in different sectors, but it is very bespoke. It's down to the individual client, their own exposures, their own product lines that they're operating within, and we're here to differentiate them. Brilliant, thank you. So, um, obviously, the Willistry acquisition has, has boosted um, Gallagher up into that higher echelons of, uh, of the reinsurance broking world. Um, what can you tell us about how you intend to operate and the market in which you're operating? So. Well, this reacquisition has been transformational for Gallagher. There's no, no two ways about it. The Gallagher re business previously was, was dominated by focus on niche products, which the, the team did incredibly well. Well, this re brings a whole different distribution to that um, and brings a whole you know, raft of additional skill set and people resource. So for us, we have the opportunity now to plug all those things together to use the Gallagher network, the power of Gallagher, and make sure we, we bring that to our customers. And there are some things about Gallagher which are, which are different to the other brokers in terms of the way it's put together, uh, the appetite for acquisition, uh, the appetite for reinvestment of free cash flow and the investment capability that that brings us. And we're excited to be able to talk to our clients about some of these different areas uh, in addition to our day-to-day -day broking capability. You talk a lot about, um, about your customers. They're obviously facing uh, challenging economic conditions out there. Can you talk to us a little bit about those economic conditions and, and what you expect that to mean for your clients and for your business? Yeah, it's, 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 it's an interesting one, isn't it? Because we've seen some very good first half year results from, from reinsurers, but we also understand that reinsurers continue to trade um, or returns continue to be under the cost of capital. So we're realistic about what, where the market is, is, is looking at. You know, I think we've, we have to be careful, and I'm sure we'll touch on areas of things like inflation and what that really means. But we think it's very, it's very specific to certain, certain niches, certain sectors. Um, it has an impact on valuations. It doesn't necessarily tie, tie into increased claims frequency. So th there's lots of different nuances and, and different, different, different parts of the book. I mean, if we look at our cyber offering, we have a best-in-class cyber team. You know, that market's very driven by supply. And if we can generate more supply, there is a market to, to fulfill it. Other areas don't have those, those constraints. So it, it really is, you know, to labor the point, it really does come back to, you know, which lines of business are we talking about? Which sectors are we, are we, are we developing? I think the important thing for us is that we spend our time looking at how we enable our clients from a capital perspective. So we know that capital is constrained. We know there are certain areas that are, that are challenging, whether it's CAT, whether it's cyber, whether it's, whether it's other areas that we've, that we've spoken about. Um, and so we need to make sure that we access, whether it's through the ILS capability that we have, whether it's through our sister companies like Artex that can bring captive management, whether it's through using our programs business with fronting and delegated authority. For us, it's all about making sure we understand what the client's capital requirements are and then make sure we, we bring them to the table. And you know we've seen more legacy transactions, for example, as people look to release reserves, and it's all tied together. And the, the important piece for, for us and for our clients is making sure that we understand that in the round and that we make sure we bring those solutions to bear. And you know, Monte Carlo is gonna be a great conference to be able to sit down and have some of those strategic conversations. That's, that's really interesting, thank you. So you're alluding there to the uh, capital uh, availability for, for certain lines of business. We've seen, um, certain reports of companies perhaps moving their uh, allocation of capital around and perhaps take, moving it away from cat business. Um, cyber is, has been an area where, um, where that's perhaps moved to. What can you tell us about that and your, um, the availability of capital for, the, um, for the, the clients that you've got? It's been an interesting market. I, I, I was in Bermuda a month or so ago and it was literally split in two. There were entities that want to diversify away from cat who have you know, been writing cap business for a long time, struggled with some of the challenges around secondary perils, the issues that have come with writing earnings covers in that space. Um, and there are others that have already diversified away mm -hmm. from cat and now see cat as a major opportunity. What I can say is that you know, we place new cat and new retro limit mid-year. There is availability 
of supply. We expect that to continue, but it needs to be thought through in a in a strategic way with clients. There, you know, it is it is not possible to go and get the level of earnings cover that people have had in the past. So really, it's about the, the go to market strategy and how we how we think that through with our with our clients and make sure that it's tied into reinsurer relationships. I mean, one of the things that Gallagher can bring to the table as an aligned business with the two parts of it. We have a whole company full of market makers. So we're very fortunate that we've got a lot of good traders within our business and we can align those market makers with generating new capacity. And that's what we're spending a lot of, a lot of our time doing. So while I understand that um, you know, CAC capacity has been become more constrained, it's not more constrained in every area and we have been successful at bringing new limits to market. One of the, the criticisms is often leveled at the, uh, at the insurance market and the reinsurance market is that it's always battling the last issue. Um, how do you think that the insurance market can get on the front foot here? What role does Gallagher Re have in, in that? So I think it's probably worth starting by saying that, you know, if there were no unforeseen events, we probably wouldn't be, wouldn't be stood here. You know, it is our role to, to pay out for fortuitous or unfortuitous events. Um, and so we need to be sort of pragmatic around that. I think you can split these events into maybe foreseen and unforeseen in terms of understanding that there is an exposure there, understanding how we model and, and track that exposure and then paying losses as opposed to some of the things that we've seen manifest themselves where, frankly, large chunks of the industry didn't foresee the exposure that, that came through. Um, on the latter one, you know, we're spending, you'll, you'll hear lots from us this conference about investments we're making on the analytics side of things, um, investments we're making in people around bringing in a new head of climate, for example. Um, and so all of that builds our capability in the space to help our clients navigate through what we know reinsurers will be, will be talking about. So, so we fully recognize the inflationary environment we're operating in, for example, but we also want to make sure that we recognize the nuances of our underlying client business. Different markets and different sectors have different challenges associated with them, whether it's the Ogden rate in motor in the UK, uh, whether it's you know, energy prices and the impact that that has um, and, and looking at those limits and, and what inflation is doing to limits overall. But what is clear is that everyone's thinking about this and our job is to make sure that we bring our clients' portfolios in a constructive way to reinsurers, take the time to actually go through this, work with them on their messaging around inflation, look at how that fits together, um, and, then de and then deliver it, which is why you will see, as I've mentioned, a lot of the analytics focus around what we're bringing to bear, because that out helps us articulate better our, our client need. Another example for us would be, you know, in the cyberspace where there's a lot of vendor models producing a lot of different outputs across the portfolios. So creating a view on risk that allows us to unlock reinsurance capacity is the major project that we have going on. And you'll hear from our cyber team in Monte Carlo without doubt about how we're, how we're doing that. So when we think about analytics at the moment, it's very precise what we're, what we're looking to do. And it's very much around those key pinch points, those key pressures, and making sure that we can articulate best to reinsurers around how our clients are, are dealing with those. Tom, thank you very much. It's been fascinating talking to you uh, today. Um, thank you for joining us. For AMS TV, I'm Richard Banks.